but your wife breaks your heart. If you're not going to work, you can't sleep anymore. You're upset. She's running around with a new dude. You see her Instagram story. She's got some new guy. You're furious and you're, you're angry and you're jealous and you're bitter. You have all of this inside of you, but you're not going to go to the gym and work hard and become so fantastically in shape and so rich and so powerful that no girl ever leaves you again. You're not going to do that. What are you going to do then? Text her. Try and explain to her. She doesn't care. Like you can write the most perfect English, you can write the most beautiful words ever constructed. Forget Shakespeare. You can do. It doesn't matter. She doesn't care. She just doesn't she care. Forgot. She's distracted. She, she forgot about you. She forgot about you. So what are you gonna do with all of that inside of you if it's not positive? Well, it's gonna consume you, and you're gonna end up self-destructive, or you're gonna embarrass yourself, or you can take all of that and put yourself in a position where it never happens to you again. Those are the choices. So, what's the most intelligent choice to make? You know, I don't understand how many humans function in the world today. I don't get people who don't think like me. I, I, I don't understand it. I'm like, well, then how do how have you survived this long? Life is hard. Life is difficult. I, maybe I've just been unlucky, which I don't believe in, but I've had so much trauma and bad events and negativity and stress and all these things that have happened to me. And I've used all of it to be monumentally successful. People are functioning. If you're not thinking like me and you're going through life with any other mindset, you've been extremely fortunate that God smiled on you and allowed you to sit around most of the time doing jack shit and you have yet to be punished for that. Yeah. I, I could never have lived that life. If I was a bit lazy or a bit, you know, or I was a bit of a snake or if I lied to people, I'd be dead by now. Yeah. Like, so a lot of these people are just absolutely and utterly blessed by God that they managed to go through life with such a non-competitive mindset and they're still breathing. Like, I, and I don't get, I, I don't understand how people can think any other way. I've spoken to dudes and like, yeah, you know, I had a bad couple months. Why? Oh, my girl left me. You've wasted months? You've wasted months? Oh, like, you had, you had the, think of how much God loves you to have given you the, the grace and given you the opportunity to waste months of human time over some chick. Like, talk about blessed head to toe. If I waste months, empires are gonna collapse. I'm gonna end up in a cell or dead if I waste months. I have things to do every Here's single day. day. I can't waste a second. Like, these people are just absolutely in infinitely blessed and their mindset is a product of that because they're, they're spoiled children. Absolutely spoiled children. Because there's a whole bunch of people out here daily who fail. There are men out here who fail daily and they have yet to feel the true consequence for it. They fail to go to the gym when they know they should have gone to the gym. They fail because they forgot their keys and it took them 10 minutes to find them. They fail because they replied to a question they got sent on WhatsApp the wrong way. They fail because they didn't smile when they were supposed to. They didn't say please and thank you to that person who helped them. They fail because they didn't say hi to that girl who's looking at them out the corner of their eye. They just fail perpetually. They go through life missing every opportunity and just failing, failing, failing. And somehow we've built a society which is so soft and God is so giving and so graceful that they still have a place to eat and a, a, somewhere to sleep and they're still surviving that that shows how nice god is yeah. because it, it, before this society truthfully if you were that level of failure you would be dead survival of the fittest, of the fittest. and none of these men out here are fit yeah. their mindset isn't fit the reality isn't fit they're, they're pretty, absolutely they're failures they're, they're failures yeah. and they're just failing every single day and the goal but you know what tomorrow i'll go to the gym yeah. you've been failing your whole life that's all you've done is fail and then you sit and wonder why people like me absolutely and utterly outcompete you. It is so easy to become a top tier male in the world today because the competition is so ridiculously low. There are 2% killers like me and everybody else, amateur. Head to toe amateur. They can't even pay attention to anything. They can't try anything. They're amateurs. And it's, it's, it's really mind blowing to me because I've tried with all of my computational power to imagine having a mindset different to mine. And I just can't see a reality worth having. I can't see a reality worth living. I can't see how you're gonna build a life worth experiencing if you have any other mindset. I've never seen somebody massively succeed and they didn't believe in themselves, ever. I've never seen somebody who just allows life to happen to them and become blown off course by some sadness, end up doing massively monumental and important things. I've never seen it. It's never happened. It does, and it's never gonna happen because it's competitor. It's like crypto, it's player versus player. Right. I can sit here right now at power. I can sit here right now and recall events that would prevent me from sleeping for two to three days. That gives me a superpower that other men do not have. They want to go to sleep. They're tired. I, I can stop being tired for, for days at a time. I can just have a thought. I can remember. I can sit, close my eyes, and use the power of my brain to vividly remember events, and I will not sleep for days. 
And when people come to me and say, oh, this happened, I'm really sad, or my heart broke, or this bad thing happened to me, I say, good, good. That's Thank right. the Lord that he's given you this endless source of motivation. You're wasting it. That's your problem. But it's been given to you. Nitrous oxide has been given to you. You just have to use it in the correct way. So I'm the luckiest man in the world because uh, all the bad things that happened to me have given me all the building blocks to become the most fantastic man on the face of the planet. Grief. No one escapes it. Not the rich, not the poor. Not the famous, not the infamous. Grief is a natural response to loss. Often the pain of loss can feel overwhelming. You may have all kinds of unexpected emotions. You can be angry, you can have disbelief, you can have guilt. There isn't a person listening to me who hasn't encountered grief. You've lost somebody. You've been through some things. Maybe it was the loss of an opportunity. Maybe it was the slow disintegration of a relationship that was once a source of love, and now it is a source of pain. No tear ducts will go unused in this life. The moment the doctor slapped your bottom, you came out of your mama crying. There is no way around it. There is no injection for grief. No medication for grief. It doesn't matter how intellectual you might be, how wealthy, or even how spiritual you may be. Grief without discrimination comes to everybody. Don't let these people deceive you that they are so spiritual, they don't know what it is to have grief. They are liars. Every last one of them are absolute liars. While grief is common to all of us, prolonged grief can be physically and emotionally debilitating. It can affect your health can affect your mind. It can affect the next relationship you have because you really haven't gotten over your past relationship. How long? How long will you mourn? You should have overcome your grief by now. How long will you weep? How long will you be bitter? How long will you be angry? How long will you sob and mourn and walk around enraged? What good is it getting a divorce if you're still gonna be mad? If you're still gonna be writing notes and wondering did you see him and who was he with? You are not divorced, I don't care what the paper says. You are still married. How long? God said. How long will you mourn over a door I have closed? How long will you mourn over a marriage that's over, a job that's gone, a girlfriend that left, a boyfriend that left? How long? How long will you be angry and frustrated and build your whole life around something that is dead. If you're going to fulfill your destiny, you have to get good at letting things go. Jesus said, offenses will come. Disappointments will come. Betrayals, things that are not fair will come. How you handle the hurts will determine whether you move forward or whether you get stuck bitter over what didn't work out. How many people are living wounded over how they were raised, a friend that walked away? They wonder why they don't have good relationships. It's because they haven't healed. God brings a new person, but they're so insecure. This new person has to keep them fixed. The problem is that's not sustainable. Until you let go of what didn't work out, that wound is going to hinder you wherever you go. You would be shocked at the people who get up every morning with a heart full of grief 
and it comes out in their speech and it comes out in that snappy way they confront you and you think they're mean they're not really mean they're still grieving how long how long does it take to get over a person how long will you put your future on hold mulling over your past how long i came to get somebody unstuck i came to get somebody free you cannot spend your rest of your life grieving over who didn't love you who wasn't there for you you're stuck god did not create you to be stuck with a heart full of grief it's why you can't fall in love it's not that there's nobody to love it's that you haven't gotten over who you used to love how long will you be angry how long will you keep checking their facebook page how long will you keep investigating somebody who's not even thinking about you anymore how long will you mourn around the tomb of what didn't work out? There are some times in your life that you gotta get up, wash your face, go on with your life. Life is too short for grieving over who didn't want you, who left you, the job you didn't get, the house that you didn't close on. Hello! I don't know who I'm preaching to, you are not yourself. You were not created for this. You were not created to be stuck like this. God wants your nerves and cells and bone and muscles to move. Somebody shall move. I will not spend the rest of my life hanging around the cemetery of what could have been, what ought to have been. Look, man, if you got something that's been bothering you in your life, get past it. Don't lay that wallowing in your past, man. Your past is back there. It's much more freeing when you learn to let things go. It wasn't fair. That's okay. God will be your vindicator. They hurt you once. Don't let them continue to hurt you by holding on to it. Living in mourning is going to keep the new doors from opening. I want you to think about somebody that, that caused you some pain. Let me tell you something about the mind tell you something super stupid that I used to do. Do you know for years I hated my mother and my father, whoever they were, because they gave me away? And guess what? I didn't have any faces for the hatred because I never saw either one of them. And then once I forgave them and said, had they not given me away, I would have never been blessed to have the mother that I have, who to me is the greatest mother in the world. You can't change the past, but you can reinterpret how you see it. Give an interpretation that empowers you. I let that luggage go. Think about somebody that you've hurt, somebody that you've disappointed, or someone that has hurt you. Look at them in your mind's eye and say, I forgive you. Boy, that's a heavy load to let off. I want you to live in a continual process of forgiveness. Every day, we should be ready to forgive. I've learned life is full of wounded people. At times, they'll be disrespectful. They'll say things they shouldn't. You can't stop the offense from coming, but you can keep it from getting down in you. Joel, I can't forgive them. You don't know what they did. You're not doing it for their sake. You're doing it for your sake. Let it go. You have to give it to God.